afternoon, everyone. My name is Giancarlo Parodi from Renesas, and uh, today I would like to give you a short uh, speech about how to break the RISC V MCU adoption barriers that we see in the ecosystem. So, shortly through the agenda, we'll see a quick uh, snapshot about the RISC V uh, uh, status and then go through those embedded developer challenges that have been identified, for example, through an extensive uh, research done last year among the embedded community. And then how to break these barriers also thanks to uh, the contribution that uh, Renesas can make to the hardware and ecosystem. So first of all, you might have seen these slides already a couple of times. Uh, basically, uh, here, the reason is to emphasize that the risk five is definitely an inevitable uh, evolution of the processor market. So there is some nice uh, growth uh, figures in terms of, sort of market share, especially in the IoT uh, arena, but there are still uh, challenges that developers will face when deciding to uh, uh, switch to a completely new uh, platform. So what are these challenges? First of all, looking at uh, the survey, uh, almost half of the projects were incremental upgrades where people just were adding new software features or simply choosing uh, better or newer uh, processors. And uh, one third of all these projects were somehow related to IoT, either at a sensor level for industrial or mobile communication applications. C language is still dominant, and uh, interestingly, uh, improved deb the debugging process was one of the main concerns that was highlighted uh, over all, uh, all the questionnaires. Um, luckily and interestingly, uh, Raspberry Pi, Arduino, so open platforms are really very popular when uh, designing uh, proof of concepts. And among the people changing uh, processors or switching the processor, uh, half of them were choosing uh, something from a different family or architecture or instruction set. So this definitely shows uh, that there is a big potential for RISC V to penetrate uh, the low-end embedded market. More to that, uh, looking at uh, what are the criteria for, uh, uh, to look for um, in, a new, in a new design, obviously, meeting the application performance requirements in the first place. But uh, just below, uh, it's uh, tagged as most important thing, the debugging process and testing systems integration issues. So looking at a uh, breakdown of all those, uh, uh, of all those uh, topics, obviously the chip performance and IO chip peripherals uh, are on the top because that's uh, the essential requirement for any application. But all the bunch of uh, uh, concerns that is coming next uh, has all to do with the ecosystem. So compilers, debuggers, processor debug support, uh, the software in terms of middleware, drivers, existing code that might be available, uh, hardware tools like emulators, boards, development kits. And uh, at the end, uh, it also comes to uh, the familiarity with the architecture and the chip family, which uh, might be a potential barrier if you're switching to a completely new domain. And uh, last but not least, uh, uh, broad commercial support and even the reliable sourcing in terms of supplier reputation are judged as very, very important criteria. So how do we make sure that a uh, poor developer can get into this uh, RISC-V uh, maze? So there are several, several issues here. First, obviously, learn a new ISA, a new platform, the availability of uh, uh, suitable tools, the support for this kind of tool. So is it uh, a professional support? Is it community-based? Uh, the debug experience, so what uh, am, I, am I looking for in terms of uh, development? What is the software ecosystem around it? And what will be the migration issues that I might have uh, for migrating my software to this new architecture? The supply, so um, is a long-term supply available of uh, uh, chips, boards, and systems? And finally, what will be the total investment cost? Uh, even in terms of uh, training and getting the engineering teams up to speed uh, with the new architecture. So how can we make sure that all these issues get blown away? Basically, we need to break these barriers. So we have seen the ecosystem is key and Renesas is engaged in developing the RISC-V ecosystem. How do we do that? First of all, we provide a free of charge uh, development environment complete with uh, compiler, debug stacks, uh, configuration tools, and so on. And uh, in parallel, uh, we also uh, partner with the market leading supplier of commercial environments, uh, progr production programmers, IDEs, and so forth. And this is continuously expanding. To ease the migration, we have to crush those adoption barriers. 
So it means uh, uh, availability of low-cost uh, kits, MCU samples, application nodes, training, and especially technical support needs to be as broad as possible. And also to abstract uh, all the architectural details that might be uh, an issue, especially at the beginnings, uh, we provide some configuration tools that help you uh, set up your microcontroller projects in all these aspects and generate quickly an application so that you can focus on the application level part of your software. And finally, as a reliable sourcing, this is a call really for uh, renowned suppliers to support uh, uh, the ecosystem. And therefore, uh, we do have uh, commercial microcontroller products available with excellent quality, with excellent long-term support. And all this can support your, your design to migrate from 8, 16-bit legacy architecture to this new uh, performant ISA at higher performance and keeping the costs as low as possible. So let's look at the, the ecosystem details. First of all, this is the first uh, product that we launched based on RISC-V. Some uh, highlights here is the low power, low leakage process. It can support wide temperature range, it can support a wide operating voltage. And uh, as a few uh, highlights in this design, it includes the Renaissance own developed uh, RISC-V CPU core uh, with uh, quite a nice performance considering that it's just a, a tiny little 48 megahertz uh, microcontroller has a rich set of analog uh, digital interfaces and lots of safety and protection features. Among these, uh, there are some clock monitoring on chip, a CRC unit, uh, ECC on the memory uh, RAM, independent watchdog, self-test routines for the ADC, and to uh, enhance the robustness in the field, also some uh, boot swap capability for firmware updates after deployment. These are just some, some few highlights. And the packages are really uh, a lot of, in a lot of different flavors from a QFN 48 pin down to a very tiny uh, wafer level chip scale package with just 16 pins. A little bit more details about the CPU itself. Uh, so on top you can see which extensions were implemented, which are basically very well suited for small, tiny embedded applications. A uh, couple of highlights here are that uh, although it's uh, quite a simple design, so a, a two-stage uh, in-order pipeline, uh, we implemented a dynamic branch predictor, which uh, is very useful for uh, enhancing the runtime behavior and optimizing the control flow of your, uh, of your code. Uh, we have the usual uh, standard performance monitors, but on top of that, uh, also a uh, hardware multiplier and divider to uh, speed up the operation of the mathematical uh, uh, instructions, and also uh, stack monitoring. So you are able to detect uh, a stack overflow in hardware uh, through, this, uh, through this feature, which is quite important to, um, let's say, enhance the reliability of the system. Um, on top of that, some uh, uh, tracing, uh, simple program tracing functionality. And uh, also interesting, uh, we implemented a um, fast uh, CPU context switch uh, feature through a register bank set, which is programmable, and can basically uh, save and restore uh, application level registers in one shot uh, when you, for example, switch the contest in an RTOS or uh, entering an interrupt, for example. It supports uh, uh, hardware vectoring with uh, priority preemption, NMI interrupt, uh, and so on. What is this suitable for is really a broad market uh, device. So given its low power, it can uh, be used in a variety of applications. So from consumer appliances, remote controls, uh, gaming accessories, building automation uh, um, applications or smart home. So fan controls, smart shutters, but also in industrial uh, environment. So for sensors, uh, board uh, power supply controls, process monitoring, and even for uh, medical, medical applications. So things like uh, smart sensors, health trackers, and so on. Important is the ecosystem. So that's a snapshot of uh, what we support today. So on top, you see uh, all the Renaissance-related uh, environment with uh, uh, the debugger, the Eclipse-based uh, uh, IDE. Um, we support an LLVM compiler. And on the bottom, you see the commercial partner that uh, today already support the chip. So uh, Sagar uh, with Embedded Studio, IR with Embedded Workbench, and uh, Ashling with uh, the risk-free SDK uh, environment. Here on the right-hand side uh, are, is also a special, a special tool that I quickly mentioned before. It's called Smart Configurator. 
uh, and that we'll see a couple of slides uh, uh, just to uh, emphasize what this is. This is integrated into the Eclipse environment, but is also available at the moment as a standalone version if you want to create, uh, for example, Sager or IR projects that you can then uh, compile and build. And uh, on the right hand side, uh, the FPB, so the fast prototyping board, which includes basically everything you need to start uh, development. And uh, we have a little bit more details on that as well. So a couple of words about the smart configurator. That is really a GUI environment that you can use to configure everything about your system, starting from the low-level stuff like uh, pin assignments, clock assignments, uh, all system-related settings, uh, up to uh, clocks, for example. And then uh, you can add software stacks uh, within the environment very easily, configure all the, uh, all the settings of a specific peripheral. And this, uh, this uh, tool is able to generate then the hardware abstraction layer for you with, uh, on a specific uh, API. You can display all the ping functionality, resolve conflicts automatically within the tool. Um, it can also assign, uh, as a small highlight, sim even symbolic names to your, to your pin, so you can use that definitions in your application. And there is also something we call a developer assistant, which is basically a kind of inline uh, interface where you can drag and, dro drag and drop APIs uh, in your application code. So that is very uh, quick and easy to uh, uh, let's say, implement, uh, implement some uh, proof of concept. This is the board. So uh, in, in the center, there is a microcontroller. Uh, interesting is that it has an on-chip uh, J-Link uh, uh, debugger. So uh, with this, uh, with just a simple USB cable, you can start uh, uh, debugging your application. And it has a lot of expansion connectors uh, for uh, the Arduino system, for PMOD uh, compatible modules, and also uh, some footprint for an additional groove connector, uh, infrared uh, remote control receiver, and also if you want to build your own uh, daughter cards or prototypes, you can also use the breakout, uh, breakout connectors that basically expose each uh, microcontroller pin. So it's really, really, really easy to start with this, uh, uh, with this board. And it's available uh, worldwide. So you can buy it everywhere from any uh, catalog distributor on the internet. So it's really easy, uh, easy to source uh, and use. And we have a lot of collateral that comes with it, application notes, examples, training modules, and so on. So it should really make your transition smooth. So then, as a summary, just to uh, conclude, uh, uh, first of all, uh, we have seen it's important to uh, uh, push and sustain the ecosystem. So first of all, this device, this environment is an ideal choice if you want to uh, uh, start uh, developing and testing with, uh, with RISC-V. It's an innovative chip, uh, energy efficient, has cost advantages. So uh, there is a lot of uh, benefit in starting on this platform. And uh, at the same time, uh, because we provide this free of charge environment, uh, you can really start at no cost. So you don't have to do any upfront investment to, uh, to get started on the new architecture. At the same time, if you have already uh, commercial environments that you use to develop on other architectures, for example, uh, we also have support for all the major uh, suppliers. So there should be no, uh, no painful transitions even in this case. Smart configurator, this, uh, this uh, very nice uh, graphical tool, uh, can help you in abstract all those implementation details that you might not be familiar with and might be uh, an adoption barrier when you want to start experimenting with the chip, uh, besides from reading maybe a 3,000 pages user manual. And uh, the low-cost board is affordable, uh, is available uh, broadly, so uh, it's really easy, uh, easy to get started, also thanks to the complete collateral that uh, is, uh, is provided on top of that. Okay, so this concludes my short speech. I hope it was informative. Uh, thank you very much for attending, for listening. Uh, there is also a panel, uh, panel session on the outside, so uh, I'm sure if you will have uh, questions, comments, uh, requests, feel, please feel free to uh, step by and uh, uh, we can have a, a conversation and exchange ideas. Thank you very much. Thank you.